Utopia podcast. The party wake up on the road and head towards Wimston. They find the farm village nestled in a valley in the mountains. Journey through town, praying at a fountain of Myceria along the way. And make it to the lying woodpecker, the inn of the village. They decide to stay, renting rooms, and begin to question the sad members of the inn, all with missing family of some kind. And that is where we find the party. his face again and look up at you. Yeah, Livy's also gonna like Can you bring my Goldie them. back? Who's Goldie? <gasps> my wife. <laughs> well she's not here. When was the last time he saw your Goldie? We came to ask you some questions. Like three days ago. Did she say anything? Did did she went out to her friends to give them a pie at the edge of town, and then she just never came back and never got the pie, and no one ever found the pie. So she never made it to her friends. Mm-mm. It was a walk through town. She wasn't in the woods. She wasn't in the fields. Was a Bigfoot get into town in the middle of the day? Middle of the day? That is peculiar. Can you, um, kind of show, uh, so it was just in the middle of town? Can you kind of describe her route where she would have gone? We live just a few blocks north of here, and she would have went all the way up to the northwest corner of town, just by the, the mixing it up, and uh, just had our sixtieth <laughs> wedding anniversary. <laughs> this must be incredibly hard for you. I'm so sorry. The dog, like. Still letting you pet it, but gets up Zeva and like turns and like puts its head on the the man's leg. This is her dog, you know, Rainbow. Is is your dog a good tracker? Oh no, he's lived life indoors. I'm not a. I own a few farms, but I'm a a trader. I uh, manage the, the the carts that come to and fro and make sure that this town sells its goods and brings back and it's all for naught. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best to find Goldie, was it? Yes, Goldie. Gold. We'll find her. Um, you lived. All right. What does Goldie look like? She's about four seven. Blonde hair, like the setting sun, and a beard so soft could be made of silk. She sounds beautiful. She's. Is she also? Is she also a dwarf like you? Or. Mm-hmm. 
Livy is like jotting this down. The woman next to him pats him on the back a little harder and she says, There, there, Frederick will find her, same as we'll find my Wren. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Rint? Uh, well, Ren is. He's about this tall. Uh, he's got black. How tall is this tall? <laughs> yeah, like, she's sitting. She? <laughs> she's sitting on a stool. And she goes, she puts her hand just above her head. And she looks to be elvish. She looks to be fairly tall herself. Um, okay, so he's tall. So he's fairly tall. Um, we just started dating. And I have to say it was love at first sight. And I miss that sight. And she starts crying herself. Livy will um, take out one of his many, many handkerchiefs. Not Morgus's one. <laughs> um, uh, he wouldn't be me. Yeah. Um, and will, like, give it to her. Mm -hmm. She uses it. She blows her nose a little, a little loudly in it. <sighs> She's been gone for about a week now. When was the last time you saw it in? I went out into the woods to go trapping. I went and checked his traps and there is no trail of footprints and his catch was still there. And it's like he'd never existed at all. And you didn't hear anything, you didn't... I mean, nothing, no, no tracks. Tried, tried to track him, but I couldn't find anything. Are you also um, a hunter? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a leather worker. And process what he catches, that's... How we met. Just moved to town about a month ago. Made it out of the city, you know. Oh, what city? Laurencia. Oh, we've just come from there. Yeah. It's nice out here. It seems quiet, um, which is unusual, uh, you know given what's happening. Um, do you know of anyone else in here that, that might be willing to speak with us that that lost someone temporarily? If not lost someone, obviously, but you know. Mm. Well, Caesar over there points to a large bear-shaped man. Full fur ears, snout, claws, just sitting in the chair in front of the fire. Is he like an actual bear? He's like an actual bear. And I'm sorry, your name was? Mm. Hannah. Well, thank you, Hannah. Make, did I give you a name already? That was something I, different. So if I did, I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it is a pleasure meeting you, uh, Hannah. I wish you were under better circumstances. Um, we will. At this point, you all watch as Zara walks into the room, and the man behind the bar's demeanor instantly shifts. He. His face gets soft and his cheeks get a slight rouge from what you can see in his dark complexion. And then he gets the widest smile. And he looks directly at Zara as this happens. And he goes, 
my beautiful wife. And she kind of smiles back at him with lovesick puppy eyes and says, my handsome husband. Uh, and uh, she turns and heads back into the kitchen. He kind of watches as she goes and watches the doorway. And then kind of snaps to starts washing dishes again. Is everybody here lovesick or something? I I have a question. Uh, Caesar, is um Hannah the person he lost, was it a, a a romantic partner of theirs? Yep. Well how many people I guess it depends on what you mean by romantic partner. Someone he loved. It's his son. How many... Ah, okay. Well, that is not a romantic partner. Uh, well... That would be a little bit weird if it was romantic. If it was... All right. They love each other, but uh, hopefully it's not romantic. Maybe I need an education <laughs> on the definition of romantic because I think the I thought friendships could be romantic I thought family could be anyway I think maybe the word you're looking for is unconditional yeah unconditional yeah, love is different than romantic that's love that's right <laughs> R- uh, yes romanticism a-, a love between yeah Yes, it's it's different than familiar. Maybe this isn't the conversation for now. This isn't the conversation. You're right. Oh, and uh, if there's any uh, Charles over there, he points to the person at the organ. Thank you very much. If there is anything else we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. All right. All right. I'm going to go to Caesar because I really wanted to meet a real bear. Mm-hmm. Just a real ass bear. What's Ziba doing <laughs> while this conversation is happening? Um, she's sitting on the the ground, absolutely petting the dog and crying. <laughs> oh, actually, no. If Zip, if, uh, if she's crying. I don't think anyone knows. She's all the way sitting on the ground, but just... Absolutely, silently crying. I love, yeah. uh, Livy will like silently like pat her shoulders and give a small little smile um, before he goes over to the real ass fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you say to Caesar? Um, hello, Caesar. My name is Livy. We're, um, I'm an adventurer, and I'm looking uh, into the disappearing disappearance of people. And I've heard you uh, lost your son. Does he growl at me? Doesn't growl at you. He has a cup of tea in his hand, and he's just looking stoically into the flames. I was wondering if you could descri- describe his disappearance. Um, a little bit, if that is okay. There's sort of a... <sighs> May looks towards you and kind of sizes up everyone. Five days ago, my son went to tend our bees. I asked him to check the hives to the south of town, and I checked the hives to the north of town. When I got back from checking the hives, he just never came back. He just never returned. He turns and looks back at the fire. These bears keep honeybees. I'm going to be sick. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Mister, did you did you have these bears keep honey? Honey, did you do that? I was trying to do this because this is very serious. I love it so much, but I'm like, this is a very serious conversation. But also, these real ass bears are keeping honey. Gonna like just kind of lean over to Scylla. You think we could get some of that honey? Marcus, I hardly think this is the time to think about food. I mean, I'm sure they'd be more than willing, but I think we should get a sun back first. Ah, uh, yeah, don't, I'll, I'll just keep that in mind for later then. A reward! Fine. Give us your honey, let's, bears! Let's find his son first, and then we can talk... And your picnic farmer's baskets! Market essentials. Yeah. I wonder what sort of conditioner Goldie uses on her beard if it's like silk. <laughs> Something to motivate us finding her, I suppose. Absolutely. Was did your um? You said it was south of town. Was it in the woods or in the field? Oh no! South. Arby's tend to the flowers of the orchards and the vegetables and the fruit in the fields, so we keep the hives close. Is that something he would go out and do often on his own? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm about to retire. I'm an old bear. You don't look that old. You don't know bears. No, I don't know bears. You don't look that old to me. That's very kind of you. And what was your what is your son's name? Ralph. Mom. We'll bring Ralph home to you. All right. He's got white fur. And blue eyes. And he's a little shorter than me, but he's a lot stronger. Like I said, I'm an old bear. All right. Well, thank you. I We appreciate, you know, I'm, I'm sure that was hard to recount. Anything that helps, right? Of course. Thank you very much. We are going to talk to you, um, the last person by the organ, but if there's anything you need from us, please say it. Please ask. Just Marie? bring my son back. Of course. My only hope is that no one's found any bodies yet. There's been people missing for three weeks? Two? Two weeks? Was there anything... Do you remember anything odd before the first disappearance happened? Anything unusual? There seemed to be an awful lot of people just happy like they were fulfilled full of love of some kind that's all seems to prey on us people that love the strongest you know Yes. Livy will, like, take a look at the bartender again, um, back where the shopkeeper lives, and she'll, and he'll, sm- and he'll frown. Like, a very, very worried frown. Um, I'm, I'm gonna kind of side-eye Livy. I'm going to go find the accountant for just one second. Um... You- Zibba, are you still sitting on the floor <laughs> laughing or crying? Well, sorry. <laughs> this is just so funny to her. It's not like, it's not like, no, no, no. It's not like a hard cry. Like, it's like a, you could stare at the ceiling and you wouldn't cry. But like, if you like tilt your head mm-hmm. down, you'd cry. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like barely a cry in silence, just on the floor, which honestly, I thought I had a few more hours tonight before <laughs> I would be crying on the floor of a bar. But that is, that's the mood right now. <laughs> Sad organ music is still playing, Livy, as you 
make your move. Can you guys do me a favor and uh, question him? I'm just a little bit worried about our friend. Sure. I can try. Godfrey goes You're up. Like, can you question the last... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually <laughs> yeah I suppose I can go over and have a chat thank you I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's just going to be a beast sphere but I'm going to check on her for just a second sure alright Scylla so, uh, you head to Charles at the organ is anyone else going with Scylla yeah Godfrey will go Godfrey yeah. I'm not going to come up right behind him. I'm going to kind of approach from the side and I'm going to put my hand like on the top of the organ just to kind of signify that I'm I'm there and not to like throw him off. He looks up at you, gives you kind of like an acknowledging motion with his head and then just keeps playing. There was no misstep in the music as he did so. Um, excuse me, do, do you have a moment to speak with us? Um, my friend Godfrey and I here. Um, what are we bothering you if we ask you a couple of questions? You can ask me whatever you would like. Um, I I don't mean to make assumptions, but I, I take it that sorrowful playing. Um, you've been affected by the the disappearances going on? Yep. About the same time, Ralph was gone. My Betsy was stolen as well. And who is Betsy? My sister. And I, I take it you have affection for the sister? She's a sister you get along with. We're a team. We, we never married. We just... Lived on the farm, took it over from the family, and and just, just my best friend. Morgus will kind of sidle up to the to Scylla and Godfrey. Um, what what was? What was she doing? Do you mind if I ask when she went missing? Was she running errands? Nope. She was at home. I was in the fields. It was a muddy day. And the cart got stuck. And the... Came home. She was gone. I'm sorry. You said it was muddy. Um... Did you see if she'd run off in, in another direction? Did you see where she'd... Or or where something had had taken her? No footprints anywhere. On a muddy day, no footprints. Yep. Well, I hear Bigfoots are good at sneaking around. Well, let's not jump to conclusions, uh, but we do want to find her. It's no conclusion. There's a big foot around. So she vanished five days ago in the middle of your home? Nope. Ten days ago, I think. Ten days. What day is it? Well, you said it was when Ralph disappeared. What's the date? Right? How long has it been? Well, today's date is... Um, five um, days ago. Ralph went missing five days ago. Uh, the this man has five gray five. shocks. Yeah. Gray shocks in his hair. His hands are moving deftly. He still doesn't miss a note as he's talking to you all and thinking. Um, but he, they're like wrinkled and thin. He's, he's older in years. Is your sister younger than you? Older than you? Younger? By about 12 months. What do they call those? Tiefling twins, I think. That's what they call them. Younger by how many months? 
about 12. Oh. Jopie's version of Irish twins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an almost Irish twin. One month, that bastard. If only I would have been born one month sooner. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my fault. If only he had been born one month. <laughs> 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 it's his fault. <laughs> my brother's. <laughs> Are you going to find her? My Betsy? No promises, but we'll try. Do you... Do you take requests at all? The music stops. (laughs) And he turns to look (laughs) at you. (laughs) I used to... I go on. Well, um, I, I sort of um, have you heard? It's an old folk tune. Da 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 do da do dum da dum. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and this little more cheery song. <laughs> he plays it in a minor key. <laughs> So it's recognizable <laughs> as the song, I love but that. it's sad. <laughs> I'm gonna go outside. God, why can't these mourners just cheer the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of wake is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh All right. Let's. At this uh, point. You all are shocked by the sound of shattering glass as Zara walks back from the kitchen and Philip drops a glass in his, like, awe of seeing her. Um, And (laughs) Olivia, we're going to go back to you. (laughs) It's fantasy, I miss. Okay, I actually went to find find her. Trying to make a point. Okay. I got, I got, I got the point. <laughs> Pretty heavily put, actually. Is that too heavy-handed? Nah, good. Should I take it back? Never. <laughs> I love this. The sound of breaking glass shocks you. <laughs> the man loves his wife. <laughs> I'm gonna grab onto Morgus and Godfrey and go. That man's a goner. <laughs> we have to do something. <laughs> Louis already uh, right. like close to the bar. Are you tr- you're trying to follow Zara or Philip? Um, well, Philip was just standing there, right? Like Zara is the one who mm-hmm. left. Yeah, that. Yeah, I, I was following Zara because, like, I was like, ah, okay, loved ones leaving, separating. She just goes right back to the front desk um, and starts working in a book, uh, writing numbers and doing calculations of letters and costs and orders and things. <sighs> Hey, um, I have a, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Do you often walk? This is going to sound incredibly creepy. Do you often walk alone when you go into into town to do the store work? Again, I I don't realize how that sounds, but um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Libby becoming the new suspect. Well, I don't leave the house very often to be honest but I tend to take my husband with me whenever I leave all right it's just well I'm questioning more and more people (laughs) and it seems very specifically people who are taken have very very close loved ones and I would recommend you and your husband stick close together if you're leaving I would um, recommend avoiding. I just got the worry, is all. Apologies. This, like, large smile spreads across her face. You're saying we should just, like, lock ourselves in a room and <sighs> oh my God. ignore the world for a while? You know what? That's a great you know idea. What? Kind of As Marcus walks outside. Would. You know what? Uh, whatever keeps you safe. 
I, uh, I was going to recommend you just stay in Paris, but if that's what you want, then go for it. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> Philip! She's like, <laughs> <laughs> fell from behind the pot, yelling into the other room. <laughs> We're going upstairs! <laughs> wow, we should name the firstborn after you. Anchor is an all-in-one podcasting platform that allows you to record, edit, add music, publish across every p- platform. It gives you your own website, allows you to customize and brand that website, and honestly, it's it's all in one place and it's so easy. You literally just drag and drop and drag and place and it is so easy. I'm not even sure if the podcast would have made it this far if it weren't so quick and convenient. So if you are thinking about starting a podcast or currently have a podcast, why not switch to Anchor? Uh, It's a all-in-one free podcasting platform uh, and all you have to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Seriously, download the app, go to anchor.fm and get started. You know, Livy, if someone disappeared without a loved one, there wouldn't be anyone to mourn them. And we wouldn't have a lead. So just because everyone is mourning and did lose someone they loved doesn't mean that everyone who's gone missing is I unconditionally loved. I realize that in my head, but I don't know. I just have a feeling... Okay. It seems very. It feels like something, especially when he. It just seems very weird and suspicious that all of a sudden everyone, like a certain sect of people, started being very happy and fulfilled. And then those people vanished who were very close to each other started getting kidnapped. But not only kidnapped, but vanishing from the vanishing. middle of town or from. <laughs> Buildings. And if you've if you've noticed, they're all from different sides. Someone's like south, northwest, central. East. They're all different parts of the, the town. Completely different. All without the trace. Well, I think Marcus will look up at Scylla. I think Philip's safe. I think that man isn't going anywhere anytime soon. No, I think the one with rippling pectorals is more in danger. In this immediate instance, oh quite God. possibly. Uh... I'm wondering if we shouldn't check out the Church of Mysteria while we're here. It's the last time we had any inclination of people randomly vanishing. It was in the cellar of the church in Florencia. Right? Yes, and I don't think we can rule out there's anything, true. you know, so similar going on here without following up and at least checking in with the priestess of this town. Well, there's another parallel. In both situations, a blonde dwarf disappeared. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look for, for one of the other, like, staff or... or yeah, as Philip left, um, the sister that was standing next to Zara uh, takes his place behind the bar. Um, miss, um, hello, hi. Hi. Um, do you, do you happen to know of any organizations around here that help with, uh, say, community work? Um... I'm not directly familiar with anything like that, but my husband talks about being a vigilante from time to time. Oh God, the the one oh, in the, the the one who's taking care of the horses. He, so you're saying the hunky one outside has a dangerous side? I don't know. I thought it was all made up, but he runs around to new people who enter and goes, Cece! 
Um, and they seem very scared. Um, I'm sorry. Can you do that hand motion one more time, please? <gasps> CC. <laughs> and she holds up the C shape with both of her hands in front of her chest and like pumps them outward at you as she says CC. Mm. He must have some very redeeming qualities. Again, he's the one with the horses, all right? He sleeps with. Oh, he loves the horses. And like, does he relate to you them? Do you love the horses? <laughs> um, I love what tending to horses does to oh. Godfrey, Godfrey leaves the room well can I say I think at this point someone's gonna like rub her face into the dog last time and then get up and just look at this lady with like still tears a little few tears shrieks down her face just go do you have paper and something oh, to write with why are you crying <laughs> um, can I just have some yeah, paper and okay. something to um, write with She's just gonna join at the bar. Yeah, with she else pulls out like a small <laughs> square sheet of paper. Uh, you'll have to get a pen at the desk. You don't keep ink back here. Uh, you also <laughs> fill up breaking glasses, I'm sure. I got one for you, Ziba. Diddy. <laughs> okay. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you. It's got gold ink. That's a fancy ass. Doesn't. Have you met? I know I have. It's just uh, sometimes. I'm gonna. uh, Someone's gonna start walking out back uh, outside towards the stalls. I'm going with some. I'm gonna hang out with Dee Dee for a second. Are you? Do you want me to stay here or do you want a hug? (laughs) I didn't. Too. I thought they'd be angry or mad at me. I didn't want to hurt anyone. And now I, sh- I think I hurt a lot of people when I left. And I didn't, I didn't tell them anything. I didn't, I didn't tell you goodbye. And what if they're as sad as all the people here? And I didn't, I didn't want to hurt anyone. I just thought they would be maybe upset. And I didn't even think because I was having so much fun and how much it hurt them. And she's just like trying to like write this letter. But all she's written so far is just, sorry, I'm okay. okay. Yeah. It's okay. I understand. We'll stay. I have plenty of paper. Well, we have more ink. And we'll stay here as long as we need to. Until all right, I don't. What could I possibly say to make it better after what I put them through? Well, I'm sorry, it's a good start. And letting them know you're okay, because I think if your family is as close and as caring as it seems like, I think that's what they're really concerned about is if you're okay. Uh, I was just gonna kind of cry a bit more and just kind of stare at the paper for how a while. About, Doesn't really know. How about telling them write. a little bit <laughs> about the adventures you had so far? Would that sound okay? Or maybe how you feel? Does it really matter how you feel if you hurt people along the way? I really think so. You're a person too. And I think identifying why you felt like that will help you not hurt people again. Okay. She's gonna, like, take her arm and kind of hide <laughs> the paper from you. And just yeah, Livy will writing. turn around. He won't, he won't read it if Clearly, Ziba does not want him to read it. Um, I will. I'm turning around as I guess Ziba finishes, and I'm like, "All right, let's go meet the very weird man who is throwing CCs in people's faces." And we join the group because, if I remember correctly, from a few minutes ago when we talked to them, um. 
that's what they were doing. Are you are you trying to make me feel better? Or is that Do real? No, that's real. There is someone throwing two C's in people's faces and shouting CC. That's just a a part of our reality. Okay, but I have to, I have to mail this letter. Of course. Um, I I go over to is is there anyone working here or are they off voting? Oh no, yeah. <clears throat> One of the sisters is behind the the bar still cleaning up the mess that the husband has left behind. Um, do you know where we can mail this letter? Um, yeah, I can take it. Do you, you good? You won't read it, right? Um, no. Uh, Synth Crab? Farmville? Orchard Town? Where's this going? Synth Crab. Whatever you want with a vibe, I think about it. <laughs> you remember? Hey, Dee do you remember where you live? <laughs> I live in Synth Crab. I'm from Synth Crab. Okay. <laughs> it's been a while, but I do remember that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll make sure it gets there. A courier comes uh, once a week, so he was here. Yeah, I mean, actually, he was here like four days ago, so it won't take too long. Okay, do I have to... Levy, what if I write as a return address? Um, I don't think you have to if you don't want to, but uh, you can write the return address if you want. I don't have a return address. <laughs> what am I gonna do if they want to talk to me and they can't reach me because I don't have a return address? Uh, I could reactivate my old P.O. box um, when I used to be a professor. Isn't that only for professors? Professor office box? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the dumbest things I ever said, I think. I'm so happy right now. Okay. No, it's a, it's a post office box. It's just where I got mail. Okay. I really want people to know where I live. Uh, well, we can't tell them the address of our secret base. Well, no, it's like uh, you buy a location where mail is sent to, so it doesn't have to be where you're at. Because oh, um, that I had a lot work. of really weird students when I was a professor. And I didn't want them to know where I live. <laughs> and their parents. Ugh. I mean, how about Ugh. a student word that. No, no. Anyway, yeah, like. <laughs> a haunted expression. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay, that'll that'll work. I don't know your 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 PO box though. How do you is that different? Oh, let me just write it down. Okay, don't read it. No, just uh, he flips the letter and writes a return like his return address, which I totally know. Mm -hmm. Um, just choosing not to say so people don't flood Livy's PO box. Right. Right. He's a private individual. <laughs> Beautiful. What's everyone else doing? Uh, Scylla is... I'm going to look around. Um, who's who's near me? Who's... I am. Uh, uh, I, I hate to... I'm just going to kind of grip her fist at her side. I'm going out back. Would you like to join me? What are we going out back for? <clears throat> I don't want to say it out loud yet. Because I'm worried I'm right. Oh, this will be juicy. No, let's go. This will be good. Uh, I'm going to head out back. Um, What's Godfrey doing? Does Godfrey see this? I think when we last left off, Godfrey had left the building to go back out towards mm -hmm. the stables area. Beautiful. 
So you are standing watching Kevin gently caress the horse of a face while he kisses its nose. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I have two questions. Um, mm-hmm. First, where's your shirt? Um, it's getting like late a, and it's getting like kind of cold. That's a good question. Maybe I left it in the nap time spot. Kind of looks around. Okay. The second question. Are you the gentleman who's been running around to people saying CC, throwing it up in their face? He looks around really quickly. He looks over to you. CC. Thank you for answering my question. Perhaps we should go have a conversation in private. He like his jaw drops and his eyes get really big and he gets really excited. Are you are you from the the are you in the are you in the and he like starts getting really Here, loud let's, I talking really loud. Guide lonely. him back somewhere in the stables where we'd be more prime. And I okay. look around to see yeah. if any of my compatriots are around. I'm not seeing you see Scylla and Morgus walk out the door and head the opposite direction. I'll try to like back to the wave back them the down quickly. If they see me or not, it's up to them. And regardless of what they do, I just lead Kevin away. Yeah. Scylla and Morgus, what are your passive perceptions? <laughs> 12. Uh, you just 11. Know that off the top of your head. Because it's in front of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is just 10 plus your modifier though <laughs> plus proficient like your skill modifier um, you have more memory in your pinky than I do in my own body <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either of you see Godfrey waving okay uh, I'm gonna walk over to where I where Kevin was before Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you definitely see them then if you're walking towards them. I thought you were walking. The oh other no, no, no! I was, I was walking to look for Kevin. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, uh, should we not interrupt, Scylla? That looks. A I'll little catch private. Godfrey's eye, or, or try and catch Godfrey's eye, and I'll kind of like cock my eyebrow a little bit, and I'll notice that he's with Kevin, and then real low key, kind of down towards like my middle, I'll, I'll hold up two C's and act like I'm trying for nobody else but Godfrey to see it. Okay. What do you do, Godfrey? I'll give a thumbs up and then point in the direction I'm taking Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) Morgus will twiddle his fingers and this sort of glittery white and gold hand will just do one C in the air. And then fade away into nothing. Wait, are they with you? Yes. <laughs> are you sure? Scylla holds up the CC again. Because a lot of people in town have been like doing that thing to me, but then they like look away and laugh and run, and it, I don't think they know what I know. Yeah, no, they're with me. We've been on the road. Cool. Yeah, you smell. Oh, yeah. Could use a bathe in the spring, but that's for another time. Yeah. It gets kind of cold at night, but it's fun. For sure. But uh, if we will. Mm -hmm. Do you have a private spot? What's up? Uh, Okay. Move over, Sally. And he just walks to the back of one of the stalls with the horses. It's like a gray speckled mare. She just kind of looks back at you and doesn't really care as much as her hay. What's up? All right. Scylla and Morgus appear in the doorway of the, the stall. Is this a very secure stable? As stables go. For this sort of meeting. What do you mean, secure? No one steals any horses around here. No, I mean... our secrets. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so Kevin, can you verify with me what you mean by CC? Carousel Court! That's what I thought. We are from... 
What the fuck is the carousel cord? So it just rubs her temple. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Wait, should I tell him? He he knows. This is. Uh, I can't be trusted. You really shouldn't. We were sent from the Florenzia chapter to come help. Mm-hmm. That's a fancy one. That's like the OG. Yes. It's more like a cell than a chapter, really. A cell? What's a yeah. cell? Yeah. In any case, it's a bit it's... supervisory. Um, Damn it. What's, yeah, what's been going there. on in Wimston? Uh, <laughs> um... What are you wearing? I'm s- What are sorry? you wearing? He points at Godfrey's face. <laughs> it's a mask. Yeah, but... Why? It's, Is it customary for that- the Wimston Carousel Court to make comments on members from visiting courts? Um, no, ma'am. I didn't no, think so. I'm just, I'm sorry. I just got distracted. Um, well, people are missing. People are missing. Mm-hmm. They're going missing. More people are going missing. And it just seems to be all people everywhere, which is, you know, kind of concerning. And there's only three of us. So, you know. Who are the others? Carling. Carling? Yeah, yeah. And Morthos. Morthos. Yeah, he's in charge. Morthos is in charge. Great. Mm-hmm. And where would we find your compatriots? Carling's probably at home asleep or eating dinner with her dad. And, uh... Sorry. Morthos... <laughs> Yeah. What? Her her father? Uh yeah. m- may I ask the age of this this recruit? Uh she says she's 14, but I think she's 12. So let's get a rubber temples again. That that tracks honestly for the court. It, it it sort of does. I mean, she's better at some things than I am. Yes. You don't see. Yeah. That's amazing. She set up the trap at the HQ. She brings me lots of food. Um, but she's kind of upset right now. So maybe like don't piss her off because she oh. can be a little, you know, she's got kind of a short trigger. All right. Good to know. Uh, and where would we find this Carling? Uh, she lives with her dad in the cottage. Uh, what northwest side of town? Mm. Or at the what? headquarters. We're there during the day sometimes. What about Morthos? Oh, he's the blacksmith in town. Really? Tall, yellow skin, tiefling. Kind of hard to uh-huh. miss. Sounds fascinating. He's kind of a bummer. What do you mean a bummer? A bummer. Huh, I, you know what? You you just gotta meet him. Oh, isn't that right, Sally? He pats the butt of the horse. All right, well, thank you, Kevin. This has been very useful. Very helpful. Yeah, you want to go, go to HQ tomorrow? That would be important, yes. Okay. Well, I have to feed the horses and clean the stalls and brush them and pick their hooves and braid their manes and then take them to the pasture. And then I could go. But really, I have to be back in time for nap time. And then I have to feed them again and bring them back here. Okay, so the time frame would be some sometime around noon then? Midday? Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. Uh-huh. Yep. You get all that done before noon? Do you want to nap with the horses? It's really cool and fun. And I'm okay. 
You know, George over there, he gets kind of sad because no one wants to ever, like, hang out with him. He kind of smells. No, I wanna, he kind of smells. I want to hang out with him. Edward does. <laughs> Not- he points over to, like, this very no. skinny, old, all-black horse with, like, kind of glassy eyes. And just, like, he uh. looks up and, and the oats that it's eating just fall out of his mouth as he's chomping. Ah, uh, well, um, I think we should go inquire with other members of the court. Perhaps oh. you know, just sort of do do a full inventory of uh, your capabilities and uh, yeah. membership. You know, yeah, just very much take inventory. No, not an audit of any kind. No one's going to be say kicked out or disinfra- or disavowed or anything like that. It's fine. All right. Uh, it's about a three-hour walk to HQ. We found this really cool place in the woods. We figured out of town is best. That would be a watch. Okay. Actually... Three hours there, and nap time, and feeding. All right, Kevin, I have to get going. So thank you. We will meet back up with you sometime tomorrow. All right? (laughs) Be good Uh, and be sure to be discreet. Okay? CC. Yeah, maybe not not whisper his that at people. (laughs) Who you don't know. It's so fun. Uh, it sounds very fun, but it's not very discreet, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're doing good. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Godfrey will walk out of the stables. This man needs a calendar, and you know where you can get your own calendar. <laughs> 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 This ad brought to you by Ed's brain. Is, is Ed just Sam Regal? Ah. <laughs> Kevin's not sure if it's the uh, fifth of five all or the <laughs> or the five to fifth all. I gave inspiration. Um, uh, Ed gets inspiration. Sure. Yeah, that was amazing. Oh no! Like I got. Hey, you get inspiration. I, mean, I like how Godfrey also just whelp. I'm a head out in Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think Morgus just kind of looks up at Sully and goes, I, I I smell cheese. I'm gonna go make some grilled cheese with it. Bye. Does he ever take that thing off? Sully looks at Kevin and goes, I'm done here, and turns on her heel and walks out. Okay, all right. Every time. <laughs> 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 Um, you walk back in. <laughs> Livy and Ziba are... S- I assume you're still sitting at the bar. Um, mm-hmm. We were gonna go find them once we had our letter, yeah. letter mailed. Okay. Um, by the time you have that conversation with Aurora and you write down your P.O. box address, um, the rest of the party makes it back inside. <laughs> That is a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, short outro here. I just want to say we're super close to our Patreon goal. If you can support us in any way, it's much appreciated. But even more than that, uh, we appreciate being able to bring a light into your day for some brevity, some comedy, some some fantasy. And I hope that you help support us so that we can continue to do that. Intro and outro by Nolan Clock everything else by myself in the cast. Have a great day.